938 Live. This is Talkback. After almost 20 years, can the S League be reinvented? To make it a more competitive and dynamic football competition that you will take the trouble to go and watch. Uh, will there be enough young players to attract and replace the ranks of our aging local teams? What will it take for all of us to feel affiliated to our local football clubs? Now, it's been a mixed bag of reactions from the football fraternity and fans when they were hit by reported changes to the 2015 S League season. The first major revamp was the downsizing of the league from the present 12 to just 10 teams next year. Then there was the announcement of age restrictions and rules on foreign players. Now, some observers say that the downsizing of the team list could actually ensure that the remaining ones get more resources and better players. So, perhaps the attendance of S-League matches will increase if we had that. Mm -hmm. However, is the S-League just merely an ailing and tired endeavour of the Football Association of Singapore? Or is this revamp really going to help consolidate and revive the local football league? Call us on 669-11938. Going to be talking all about the state of football in Singapore. Also, how can we attract younger players to come in and strengthen the S League. A lot of people say it doesn't look like there's a future yeah, in no the pipeline. S League. So yeah. why should I bother even trying to get in or making this my career, my part time career at least? Call us on six six nine one one nine three eight. Now joining us today is PN Sivaji and uh, many of you will remember Sivaji as a technical director of FAS, uh, more famously known, of course, uh, a former national coach. He's also coached various SD teams. Uh, he's a FIFA coach and he now uh, is head coach at KBZFC in Myanmar. Uh, um, hi, Andre. Hi. Now, Sivaji, uh, the new age restrictions uh, for the local footballers, uh, is this a necessity, really, for this to uh, take place, really? I think uh, the league, after really, tw- uh, uh, I heard your colleague mention about 20 years uh, yeah. since its inception. That's right. It needed some change, uh, Andre. I think uh, going in the present format, going the way it has been going, and having dwindling attendances, uh, having no- nobody to come and support the league, sponsors not uh, are staying out of the league, something had to be done. But the question but is, will the changes have any impact? Yeah, that only... God can uh, can say, but uh, the, I, the idea behind these changes. What is the idea? Who has who has done a study behind? This? Is it right to introduce uh, or to take out older players? Because like most people are saying that the old is gold. I mean, uh, you have players with uh, tremendous experience who can come and help to to propel the league maybe to another level. So it is is it right? Uh, I know there is a no, not a total ban on players above 30, but still, there are players who are at 28, 29, 30, 31 are at their peak normally in international football. Mm. So I, I'm not convinced that uh, cutting the uh, or trying to have age restrictions is indeed the right choice. What about in terms of the downsizing of the S League? Some say it, that is a step in the right direction because that would mean the remaining teams will get more resources, better players. Yeah, I think when you when you restrict the, or when you reduce the number of things, obviously you get less. I mean, the resources are shared uh, equally uh, against maybe with, with very little resources that you have. It's it's shared equally, and I think that maybe is a is a move in the right direction. And really, I think the reason really is uh, clubs are struggling to to make ends meet. So why why stretch? Why why make it uh, so difficult for clubs to? To continue surviving, so I think uh, if we have, let's say, ten thousand, and if it's shared by ten thousand, uh, ten clubs, then you have uh, one thousand per club. That would be, that makes sense. But um, I know there's a lot of history between Tanjung Paga with uh, Tanjung Paga because I was with them in, in, in the inception of the league 1996. Mm-hmm. That's right. Very good years. Aukang and Woodlands have always uh, been uh, strong members of the league, so it'll be sad. But sometimes when you make you have to make tough decisions. Okay, I just want to go back to the question of the age restrictions because you say you are doubtful that that will make much of a difference. You said, okay, old is gold. The fact is that at this point, a lot of people would say the S League as a whole is not anywhere near gold. Yes, uh, I mean no, nobody can deny that it's not it's not near gold. It was near gold in when it when it first kicked off in ninety six. Uh, maybe goal at the time, but uh, so th- we have to try to make changes. And I think when you want to have a, a good competitive league, 
you need to get your best competitive players in action. Uh, regardless of their regardless age. Of the age. Well, let's talk about this strategically. If it were up to you to decide what sorts of changes would work, what would you say? Strategic changes? I, I didn't get that. Can you please repeat that, please? If it was up to you to make strategic changes in order to revive the league, to get people more interested in watching football played by the S-League and in getting younger players to aspire to play in the S-League, what would you do? I think the, the answer to the S-League really is to get more funds pumped in and uh, it's not so much a strategic plan uh, we we need more money into the league so that we can get, bring better players and when you bring in better players good marquee players then there are uh, going to be more people coming to watch because you, they, they are an attraction they provide an attraction and I think the next thing obviously is uh, we need to, to build an identity with all the, for all the clubs that means uh, each club must have an identity with the community that they work with be, be it the schools be it the residents uh, then there is an, uh, a sense of allegiance. You, you look at the school's competition. Uh, when you look at the school's competition, when you look at the semi-finals and the final stages, the school, the stadiums are packed. That's and why? Right. It's because there is a sense of allegiance. Because when RI plays in the final, the, 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 the students come because they see their, their cohorts playing in the, in the final. So you, you, the, the ethnic really has to think about how to build that allegiance. And I think it's really going back to the grassroots. In mm. fact, uh, you, you've made a good point, uh, Sivaji. A lot of uh, online noise, uh, well, those online have said many of the clubs are not reaching out to them enough. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether it's, that's a fair statement because I know, I know of a few clubs, uh, Ballester, Tanyong Paga, are also clubs who, uh, Warriors, Home United. That's they right. make efforts to go, but I think more should be done and there should be co- coordinated efforts uh, with the S League. Uh, to to make uh, an impact there. Uh, mm. I think that can be done. What types of activities and uh, grassroots outreach activities do you think would make yeah. a real impact, Sivaji? Yeah, I think, you know, going to the schools to... Uh, I mean, working with the schools, obviously, to do clinics, uh, to help uh, going down to the schools to, uh, to coach the star players, going out to coach. Because then only then you can identify your stars with the, with the community. Um, getting uh, the so-called star players to attend or even the coaches to attend school events. Uh, I think those are, those are important uh, activities that can be done. You I mentioned am. funding earlier and I know that is a big, big issue. What exactly is causing this lack of fund situation? Uh, I, I think everyone who commits funds to a project they want to see something in return. They want to see what can I get, what kind of mileage can I get for the money I put in. Mm-hmm. No Which makes sense. Say, Sorry, go ahead. That makes sense. It's only natural that they would like to see an ROI. Absolutely. And I think the, the, the ball really is in the administrator's court to say, look, if you give me X dollars, I'll give you X uh, amount of mileage. So I, I mean, it's very easily said. Uh, but these are the brass tacks. I mean, these are the bare facts. Right. So I'm guessing that at this point, the investors who have put in some money have not seen a return on investment. What can be done to ensure that they do get something back for their investment and therefore are motivated to invest more or even get others to invest? Yeah, I think the, uh, there, there have been cases of uh, some sponsors. I think Torb, one of the equipment apparel sponsors, have not been very happy with the way they have been treated because they came in. Uh, at very short notice, uh, th- I've just read this in the media. They, come in, they came in at very short notice to help Tanyong Paga, and uh, they were they felt that they have not been treated well. And I think there could be these all misunderstandings. Uh, you know, uh, you would just sit on the table and say, "Look, this is, I think you have not done your part of where you're supposed to deliver, and I think it's, you know, now it's your turn to do it." I think these are matters that can be resolved. Uh, but has our league got enough viewership? I think there, is effort, there are efforts put on uh, for the matches to be shown on TV. I think you can condense the program to make it into a one hour or 45 minutes, uh, one week highlights of matches. Mm. I think those are all methods. I mean, you don't need a, 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 an expert to, to tell you this, but mm. I think we really need to make sure our league is more uh, palatable to the audience. Yes, that's the thing. I think we should go back to the root causes of this, which could be <laughs> that they're just not playing an exciting enough game yeah. to warrant viewership. So you mentioned I, some I, PR I, I, issues. I, 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 sorry, I, I have to cut you there because I disagree. I've seen sure. some of the games and I've seen some very good games. Hmm. Some games that are better than what's happening in the Malaysian League. 
uh, and I, I, I really mean it. Huh? I think really? Yeah. Malaysian games, yeah, Malaysian games can be uh, can give you a false sense because you have big crowds, and that is mainly the, the, the so-called community support that they have. Right. That you think that the games are played at a very high level, but some of our actually games when you get the teams like Warriors, Home United, Tampines, uh, and even some sometimes Aukang now have shown uh, tremendous. Uh, fight back spirit so some of the games really have made me sit up and say hey what's wrong this is this is a damn good game mm. right. so but what do you why think what, the yeah why do you think the audience is not uh, supporting in spite of it I know you said that okay they need more exposure but it seems like a large number of people have already made their minds up about the S League that uh, you know it's not worth watching aside from greater you, media you, exposure you, you what else do you think can be done People yeah. have already turned their head away from the S League. Yeah, yeah. Now it, the real task is to turn their heads back, back to the S League. Because can we say that this is our league? I mean, uh, I know it has been mentioned before, but how do we show, uh, saying is one thing, how do we show that this is our league? That means there must be a lot of support from the authorities. Why should the authorities support football? Because football brings the man, I mean, brings everybody together, regardless of race, language, culture, creed, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, football brings the poor and the rich together. They hug each other when the Singapore national team starts winning matches. So there, there are a lot of uh, social advantages that we can bring into football. Uh, and I think these are areas that we should be tapping on and, and pro projecting to the, the potential sponsors that this is the, the, the way the game is being played. Okay, so does that resonate with you? If you're in the category of a potential sponsor, tell us if that is a good enough case for you to say, I'm going to put some money into making the S-League better. Yeah. If you are a spectator, a football fan, and you are watching all sorts of other football except for S-League, we want to know why. What would help bring you back uh, to watching the S-League or what would help even uh, let you begin? To get started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get started watching the S-League football in Singapore. Call us on 669 one one nine three eight. Now, Sivaji, you mentioned earlier that in fact the games are pretty good. However, sponsors might say that the lack in viewership uh, prevents them from putting more into it. It is a chicken and egg situation, though, right? If they don't put funds into it, how can the teams get better? How can the teams do more publicity, and so on and so forth? So, how do you think this situation can be tackled, really, bearing in mind the various challenges here? Yeah, I can tell you as, as a former player and a, for, and, and a former coach in the S League, turning up for matches with, with very poor attendances is one of the greatest demotivators for a performer. I'm and, sure, uh, yes. And, we, and we, we really have to find ways. I mean, I think there were there were uh, there were means in, uh, there were uh, ways that it, uh, S League used to do it before by going to schools, handing out tickets to the kids. Okay, so I think that was a good start, but. When you go there and hand out tickets, but there is no allegiance, why do people come? People will not come. Mm. So, uh, I, what I mentioned earlier, I don't, I, I don't think there's another choice. The, the real choice is for the clubs and the and the players and the coaches and the uh, the people in the club to be very visible to the community mm. and, to, and to show them why they should be uh, coming to watch their games. And once you 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 become close to the community, people identify the uh, most of the stars apart from say Durich. Uh, most of the stars are not identified by our fans. And I think that is an an aspect where the clubs and, of course, the aesthetic marketing uh, side can do mm. to try to promote the image of our, our, our stars so that there will be more following. Okay, so public relations and marketing, do you think that is the key to get more people supporting the S-League clubs? Stay with us on 938 Live. We'll continue talking about this in just a while. Tell us why you don't already support them and maybe come up with some suggestions and solutions. After almost 20 years, why isn't the S-League as popular as it can be with Singaporeans? Does it need to be reinvented? If so, how? In order to get more competitive and dynamic football. Will there be enough young players to attract and replace the ranks of our aging local teams too. I mean, if you're a young person, how do you view the S League mm. as a possible, you know, possible, career, yeah. something you want to dedicate your life to? At this point, perhaps not. What needs to happen in order for that to happen? Call us on 669-11938. We're joined today by PN Sivaji. He is a FIFA coach, former national coach, former technical director of the SAF as well, and he has coached various S League teams. Now, Sivaji, earlier you talked about how it would be great if the private sector firms could contribute more money into this. Now, one thing that has been suggested by several
several of our listeners in the past is that they could contribute in terms of funding to bring in more marquee players, which would then really help in terms of the image of the S-League, maybe up the game and also up the number of people who attend these games. What do you think, Sivaji? Well, I mean, marquee players would be uh, would definitely be an attraction, uh, but you must get the right marquee players. And what's going on now in India, this I, uh, ISL, I think, so, which yes, is a, that's a right. three-month competition. They've got some big names uh, and not some so-called big names, but they're not performing, but that's a risk you take. Uh, but are we, as a professional outfit, I'm talking of the clubs, are we ready to take in these big marquee players and manage them? That is another thing that we need to to, to consider. I think when we started the ISP in 96, uh, I think for the first four or five years, in my opinion, we, should, we saw a high level of professionalism, although it was a, a, fledg- a fledgling lead then. Uh, most of the people who came in, the coaches who came in, they were all people who have handled professional teams at, at, a, at a reasonable level at least. So we had a professional environment then. Are we still having a professional environment? I, I'm not too sure. Mm. But I don't want to pass judgment uh, as I've been away for quite, a, uh, quite some time. Okay. But these, these are considerations that we must make. Yes, bring in, bring in the, the, if you bring in, let's say, uh, a Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Anato, Anato, for example, yeah. would he be comfortable in the sit, uh, situation we are in. First, he would struggle with the lack of uh, attendances. As I mentioned, it's one of the worst things for uh, an athlete to play in front of uh, 10 or 50, 50 mm. uh, people watching a But if he were playing, more people might attend. Yes, <laughs> it's a right. big situation again. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, but I think the, sit, the, the environment has to be uh, conducive for star players to come. So we have to start somewhere, but I think uh, if you look at our past, maybe I think last couple of years we have brought in marquee players. How has that helped? Has it helped even marginally the teams that have been uh, that have, uh, signed on these players? I, I'm not sure. Okay. You seem to doubt the professionalism of the administrators and the coaches, so on and so forth. But uh, if this is something that needs to take off, or if this is something that Singapore wants to take off, it should invest some time and effort and money into getting the most professional people to manage this, right? Absolutely. I mean, the people who are running the clubs at the moment, I think are people with... I mean, most of the people who, who are running the clubs now have been running the clubs in 1996. But with all the... The, the lack of uh, support for the league, people lose interest, people who work within the environment, I mean. And they just go from day to day. And I think that is poor, that is, that is unfortunate. Let's hear from some of you now. You've been calling in on 669-11938. Joseph joins us first. Hi, Joseph. Good morning. Hi, morning. Okay, I have one thing to say that uh, you notice the, the racial imbalance of our football team. Mm. I think there's one area maybe it's a bit sensitive, but uh, as a result, the authority are not really acknowledging and uh, look into it seriously. Because it, as I remember when I was a kid in the 70s, uh, I think those days you have no professional soccer. The Malaysia Cup will fill the national stadium. But those days, you have, I think it's a quite well-balanced uh, in terms of uh, Chinese players, you know, the Indians and the Malay. So, Joseph... I think, that is important. Yeah. So, so you're saying greater diversity would bring mm. more people to the stadiums as well uh, and to support uh, the teams? Greater diversity in terms of being able to attract a big part of Singaporean Chinese players. Right. So how do you I think... I think that's important because I think, you know, it, it, it seems to be very ironical that we are supporting the English Premier League watching the, the Ang Mo and here we are, our own local guys, we are not supporting. Mm. Mm. But, I think it's uh, but that's the thing. The, one, one could yeah. say then that if you can support the English Premier League, yeah. surely you can support the S League regardless of the diversity or the racial diversity in some of the teams. Not to um, say that we shouldn't go for diversity, yeah, but yes, yes, correct, you know what correct, I mean, yeah. right? I mean, I, it shouldn't I, I, matter I, as much as uh, you make it uh, seem to matter. I think one major factor of it, that, because it's, in other words, it's one big part of society is not participating in the in the game, in terms of playing the game. Okay, so you're talking about uh, player diversity. Do you think player diversity right. would also translate into greater audience support? Yes. I believe so, because if you talk about marquee players, to, to start getting them in, you need to fill up the stadium. In order to fill up the stadium, I think this is something that the authority need to acknowledge and look into it and look at the profile of the players 
and the profile of the, 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 the people that are not playing. I think it's important that uh, you're able to bring this together. I think we are a multiracial society. We should be able to discuss this more openly and resolve it. Okay, thanks very much for that, Joseph. Well, uh, although it. one yeah. could say that if, if you can support the English football players or the yeah. Italian football players, uh, as a member of the audience, it shouldn't matter whether the team is diverse sure. racially. But since it is a point that some are concerned about, perhaps, Sivaji, you could address that. What do you think? Yeah, I think jo- uh, Joseph, right? Joseph hit the yes. on the head. Yeah. Think, uh, that is an issue that we have been trying to grapple with. Why are we not getting uh, enough members? Or why isn't there a diverse representation of races? Mm. Because we have 70-75% of Chinese not really represented in, a, in, in our, our so-called national game. Why, why do you think, think it is then? I mean, yeah, based on your not, assessment. Because I think it is not made attractive enough. I mean, uh, and you and you make all these uh, sudden structural changes to the league as well. People say, hey, there's no, there's no security. Of course, there's no security in anything, but there must be some some form of uh, confidence that a person says, if I'm going to put my effort into this mm. uh, project, then there, there must be something which will last me for at least maybe 10, 15 years. But that doesn't seem to be happening. And, uh, mm. and we, uh, we have to look, I mean, when I say... Uh, I know the people at the FA and the S-League are taking a lot of uh, hammering right now, but to be fair to them, the fact that they have actually just started now to think about tinkering with the S-League, the numbers, uh, age restrictions, blah, 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 shows that they are saying, okay, look, we have, we have a problem, we're trying, to, we're trying to change it. It may not make everybody happy. One of the things that they want to consider would be the racial composition of the players in the, in the league. Okay, uh, we will continue talking about that in just a moment, but let's hear from Jack first. He's been holding on for some time as well. Hi, Jack. Good morning. Hey, I think the problem is money, right? When you get money, you get players. When you get players, you get crowd. Mm. So the whole idea is about identification and people feel an affinity. The We have to scrap the way that is divided. Like, if I live in Tampines, I wouldn't be against Geelang. I mean, Singapore is so small. We all feel Singaporean. And to divide people by constituency is just political demarcation. So what we need to do is to revamp the whole thing into companies. So maybe OCBC play with, again, Standard Charter or Barclays or DBS Bank or Singtel, Starhub, and then all these companies will put money in and if I am uh, using Starhub then I will get promotions on it and that will make me want to go and attend if the game is entertaining and with money comes uh, everything else you know all right thank you very much Jack for that suggestion let's see yeah. what Sivaji thinks of it what do you think yeah I mean the money is the is the root of all evil they say but money in this instance we need yeah uh, what do you think of Jack's suggestion as to how to get oh. it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, getting company, you know, you know, years ago we had business houses league, which was Svaji, I think uh, we, your your line is uh, giving us it's cracking up. Can you hear us? I can hear you clearly. Okay, yeah, okay, you're back on. It again. sounds like you're back on again. You were okay. saying, what do you think of Jack's yeah. suggestion? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But again, when you bring in companies, where is the sense of allegiance? You bring in OCBC, so you only get OCBC employees. I, or, or I, I think Jack's idea is more that you, we don't name the, the, the teams according to uh, areas or geographical names like Woodlands and Hokang and all that. But if we gave them more corporate-sounding names or something like that, maybe that may be better. What do you so, think? But again, identity-wise, huh? mm. I, I feel that if you, you put them into district or, or constituent, the better chance of tapping, uh, tapping on the people who live in that area. So that's mm. a big uh, type of people that you can tap on. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not sure that when you, work with, when you put in the, the names of uh, some... Corporations that it would help, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sivaji, one last thing. You mentioned earlier that we need to make it more attractive for players to come into this league and yeah. actually contribute to it, to commit to it. Uh, question is... Maybe because they don't see a future in it, they're not doing it, which is something you mentioned as well. So how can we let them see, indeed, with concrete steps, that there is a future in doing this? Yeah, I, I think, uh, first of all, uh, you know, the, the, even the this, uh, so-called changing of the league currently now, changing the 10 teams and all, it came at, uh, without any prior warning, there was 
Yeah, yeah you said the instability, well. but about other yeah. things, you know, like uh, a stable income, uh, the fact that you will be given time to train yeah. for this. You can defer your studies for a few years so you can become really good at this game and become a star, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, uh, who wants to come into a, a league which is supposed to uh, make a career for me and I have and I earn about, say, $2,000 a month. Mm. And that doesn't pay for 12 months, sometimes for 10 months. So th- these are the top professionalism I mentioned about earlier. But I don't blame the clubs because the clubs don't have the money. They try to cut their coat according to the cloth away. So, yes, we, we need to make, make it appe- uh, appealing to people to come and play in the league. That means the infrastructure should be good, uh, the professionalism should be good, the money should be good. And there will be people coming to watch games to make it exciting for the game, uh, for the people to come and say, okay, it's worth my time to put my effort into football because it is recognized, it is supported. Mm. Okay, maybe a good experiment would be mobilizing a whole bunch of Singaporeans to go and watch a game and mm. see if player performance improves just based on yeah. you know the number of the increased number of people attending those games. <laughs> I'm sure it will have some effect. But most of all, as Sivaji has said, money is what is important here and could really solve a lot of problems for the league. Uh, so if you have suggestions on how more corporate sponsors can be attracted to do this, to put in money, do talk to us on Facebook, Official 938 Live. Many thanks for your phone calls today.